so I think we can start with um, the question in the title of the panel, which is, is the president right about the DREAM Act? Joaquin, what do you say? Sure. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think the ex executive order was the right thing to do. Uh, I think he did the right thing morally, and both morally and politically. Uh, there are hundreds of thousands of students in our country who were brought to the United States by no fault of their own, who literally are morally blameless. Uh, and the president found a way to allow them to essentially stay here without being deported, and at the same time allow them work permits. Uh, I think both of those things are good, not only for that group of folks, but also for the nation. Great. Um, Representative Torres, do you agree with the absolutely? Only in part. <laughs> America has always found itself often on the wrong side of a very important issue. Since our inception with slavery and then in the 60s with civil rights issues. But America has always found a way to make things right in time. Today, as, as uh, Representative Castro said, we have a group of, of individuals who throughout no fault of their own have found themselves in a place and they want to call themselves Americans as much as every one of us, but they can't. That's not right. And America will find a way to make it right because we are America. The world looks to us for good. But the way the president did it is not right. It's not right in many different ways. Number one, it was not right because of the timing of the issue. He had two years with a full control of the House and Senate to do what he promised to do, was to put forth an immigration reform bill. He did not do that. So why not? Why today, at the day that he did that? I think that, that question deserves an answer, an honest answer. Many say he did it for politically expedient purposes. And we have to hand it, the president is a very good politician. But this issue here is not about politics. It's about human beings. It's about an issue that, that needs fixing. And the way he did it, I don't agree with. Also don't agree with it, because for many Americans, he violated our constitutional procedures we have in place. And that's not right. No one individual so absurd the, the authority of Congress and the laws that we have. I think we can find the right way. I think America has always found the right way to fix things, and we must find the right way. His particular DREAM Act leaves out millions of other individuals who want as much as the group that he's set aside to be Americans. For example, it does not include the small business owner. The individual who now, because of the situation, meets some of the criteria, but because they either did not go have military service or decided not to pursue a higher education degree, they don't meet the definition. How about them? How about those individuals who have worked hard to build up a small business, employ other Americans, and provide their families a quality of life? That's not fair. Those, these types of individuals like that, that were not included, deserve as much justice as anyone else. Won't you agree? Yes. I think we can agree on that. And because of that, I don't agree again. Let's make a, let's make a DREAM Act that is not only morally right, but treats everyone with the dignity that they deserve. Everyone who has paid their dues, who is willing to walk the American way of life, and to be called an American. I think that's the right way to go. Let's find a dream act that fits into the mold of our constitutional responsibilities and, and laws so that we as America, all of America, can embrace it. The President's bill divides us. The President's bill discriminates, or in other words, makes winners and losers out of some people and not others. The President's law is not right. And because of that, I don't agree with you. We can do better, and we must do better. And Erica, another issue that, that uh, is very clear from, from that vote is that it is not the best bill out there. 
there were enough people out there who, who found a problem with it. And, and if we truly are committed to doing the right thing, and I believe America's soul is doing it the right way, is that we have to continue to forge together this bipartisan support. We keep talking about that they don't seem to find their way in Washington. And we have it in Texas in many cases. Is to find the right plan, the right bill. Like I cited in my earlier comments, we can do better. We can make it better. Let's come to the table, and I believe we will if, if we're willing to do that and not play politics. Well, I mean, when, when you don't have when you don't have legal status, I mean, you're you're essentially writ large and having to be aware of the possibility that you could be deported. In fact, there are traffic stops, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, that have led to people being essentially taken in and, and threatened with deportation. But he's talking about the bigger numbers are, are those that he cited. They're not in the general population. Yeah. And students are not being picked up on school campus. They're not being picked up walking home. Well, that, sure. I mean, I mean, you mean that's that, not where the numbers are at. And, and, and it's it, not where the places are rated, and, and, and universities are not. Sure, okay. you know, but everybody's driving the streets. Everybody's out in public. So but there's a. Okay. The real issue goes back to the beginning part of the discussion. Let me ask you a question. Do you think that small business owners or entrepreneurs and those career technology or jobs skilled workers? carpenters and plumbers and construction, do you think that they, sh they shouldn't have a right to be part of this Dream Act? Uh, well, think I, I think they should have comprehensive immigration reform, and we also know that Republicans have blocked that at every step of the way. But, but just so, on the Dream Act, do you, do you agree that that language should be added to it? Well, I mean, the Dream Act is legislation aimed at essentially people that are of student age. Right. Well, so should we know, add laborers and should we, uh, absolutely, you think, you think but, but, but you're in a party that is no. absolutely against that. No. No. If you just said, yes, I do. The bill doesn't go far enough to do the right thing, to do the most good. So, but, so, so let's have those people in there. And I think you might find a different tone among us. I, mean, I think I disagree. I think the, 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 the issue that Republicans have, particularly Republican primary voters, is not that the Dream Act doesn't go far enough and they want to be more inclusive and have more folks have more voters. I hope really, if you really get elected, no, and you and I had a good relationship in the yes, legislature, right? And if I get if you if you get elected to the state senate, then I hope that you will take that into the Republican Party and stand up. You know, I don't know how much support you'll find, but I hope that you will stand on the Senate floor and make that case. Absolutely, it's the right thing. And bottom line, the president can't run away from the two years he had. I mean, he had the opportunity. He, he not only did not put it, he didn't even put an idea out there for comprehensive immigration reform. He failed at his promise. He can't run away from that. Okay, so you, you had actually, in your initial comments, talked about a broader approach to this and a broader concept of paying one's dues. I think part of the discussion you two are having is that uh, this, this suspension of deportations for the people who are eligible for the DREAM Act, in theory, uh, is, is looking at them because they are the people who are young enough, they haven't lived elsewhere, don't speak other languages, and so on. Um, so how, how would you construe the category of people who have paid their dues? Is it a matter of owning a business, having been here for a certain duration of time? What do you think is, is the, how, how broadly would you draw this category that would be included in, in a more I, ideal time? Me personally, I think that's open to debate to what the, the people of America want. And I know I personally have talked to people, they would like to be included into that group. And, and currently under the, the, the proposed uh, Dream Act from the President, doesn't include that. And so that's why I'm bringing this part of the conversation here, is so that we can do a better job. We don't have to go with the President's bill. But he hasn't proposed immigration reform. He had a great opportunity at the beginning of this year to put it out there for, for the Congress to deal with. But he didn't. America wants immigration reform. America does, but nobody is out there leading that charge. To me, it should be the president's job. But my question is, uh, what is the TVP doing to get a prominent candidate for the 2014 Senate election to replace John Cornyn's vote against the DREAM Act with someone for the DREAM Act? And what are especially Latino Republicans doing to either change minds within the party to a comprehensive solution or to replace John Cornyn with somebody who will? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, the Texas Democratic Party, uh, we are the state that has now gone the longest without electing a Democrat statewide. 
Uh, it, it has been since 1994 uh, that a Democrat has been elected in Texas. And so there, quite honestly, there's a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built in this state uh, in order to elect Democrats statewide. Uh, we've had great successes on, on the local level. And, and we almost took back the House of Representatives. 2010 was supposed to be our year to take it back. And, you know, of course, we got hit by the wave. Uh, but I do see a bright <laughs> Thank despite you, President. That, <laughs> well, you know, despite that, I do see a bright future for us, uh, for Democrats in Texas. There are many of us who have gotten together and are working on building out that infrastructure to allow for success for Democrats statewide. And you know, 2014, of course, is a short time away. But I do see the day in the not too distant future where this state will cast its 38 electoral votes or whatever it is at the time for a Democrat for president. I think we'll get there. So, Joaquin, just to follow up, if you had to bet $5, 2014, is that the year or not the Democrats get a statewide office? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> but I hope it's this year. Uh, you know, but, but I want to be realistic also. It takes a lot of hard work. You have to get into the grassroots, register folks, mobilize folks, uh, and we need a stronger effort than we have right now. So my, my window is a little bit longer than that in terms of where I see it. Okay, and then back to the question about... Well, from what I've read about your brother, I think maybe you should consider running for state pilot. <laughs> maybe you will. Maybe you will. <laughs> my brother's not going to be the mayor. first to announce it here. No, no, he's going to be mayor. Based, based on the Republican Party, it's, it's a Latino Republican. Uh, we took a step in the right direction. We've heard that phrase this morning about uh, the Texas solution that was presented during the uh, convention. It's a step in the right direction. Nowhere near what, what the direction I believe it has to go. And if the Republican Party isn't sensitive to these issues, and if, the, and if we as a group are not attentive to finding comprehensive, bipartisan solutions, we will cease to be a red state. And that's why I'm working to, to help my fellow brethren better understand these issues. I've lived them, and to better understand what's at stake, and to take action now rather than later. Can we can we just add to that though? We've been hearing that said for ten years, um, and it seems like at the national level, at least, the Republican base is only going farther to the right. Um, the logic is crystal clear. It's been said ad nauseum in public, but nobody's uh, picking up on it yet nationally. So why is that going to change now, or what's different this time? I can't answer the, the answer the question on a national level, but I can tell you that uh, I feel that there's a change, at least in my, in my district, on this issue, and it's moving more to the middle. Can I, uh, if I can weigh in, I'm not cutting you off. I'm it's okay, no, you're fine. Uh, uh, you know, what's happening with the national Republicans and what's happening with the Texas Republicans and also with other of the border state Republicans, in Mexico in particular, uh, are, are, are two very different things. And uh, so, so, so you're right, Erica, that, that the national GOP has definitely moved in a certain direction. But what's happening in the Texas Republican Party, uh, I think, is, is, is quite different. So the question is going to be whether that's going to continue or whether national party trends are going to swamp the state of Texas, which is by no means a sure thing. Uh, but when you look at you know, people like Representative Torres, uh, Aliceda, Lozano flipping, Aaron Pena flipping, uh, uh, you know, Congressman Penseco uh, winning in the back there. Are, There's Aaron there. back there. Thanks for doing that. Um, <laughs> I came in with Aaron as a Democrat in 03, and then he left me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can still change Christmas cards. <laughs> the, uh, what, 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 what's happening here is that, is, is that you are seeing in, in Texas, and, and again, with the guest worker uh, plank that was added to the Republican Party of Texas uh, platform for recently, you're seeing a lot of moves in a very different, still conservative direction, but a very different direction. Uh, and finally, uh, one thing, you know, on, on Cornyn, and, and by the way, I used to work with California Republicans, so as a Texas Democrat, you know, you as a Texas Democrat, I feel your pain. You know, it's, 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 it's tough. But, uh, you know, Cornyn is, is, and I'm certainly not going to make a Cornyn ban out of you, but I will tell you this, uh, John Cornyn, Senator Cornyn, uh, is actually, uh, to my mind, uh, a voice of reason, at least in the Republican Party, uh, on this issue. I have been there and seen him talk specifically about one of the, you know, what I consider a bit of the, one of the fringier issues on the conservative side, which is the issue of whether the 14th Amendment confers birth rights citizenship. Uh, I don't think that it does. That's been the interpretation of Congress for about a century now. Uh, and I've seen Corning question on that, and he has vigorously and unambiguously affirmed uh, that in fact it does. And I think that's good policy, and I think this speaks well to him. I, mean, I think if you look at, uh, you know, the nominee, Ted Cruz, for Senate, uh, very far to the right, 
Rick Perry, especially after he went to the presidential elections, very far to the right. I suspect that Dan Patrick in the state senate will probably run for some statewide office. If he's able to win, you will essentially have a triumvirate of Republicans who are quite extreme. Uh, and so that, that I think that's going to be very difficult in the coming years for Republicans to balance because they're essentially alienating moderate pro-business Republicans mm -hmm. and leaving a lot on the table, quite frankly, for Democrats. Representative Torres, you might be in the state senate uh, next session. Do you, what do you think? It's going to take a lot of, a lot of helping people come to grips with, with the issues. I, I, talking to some other representatives on other issues, there's a lot, there's people out there that are not as well informed as legislators, perhaps they should be on an issue. Because there's so many issues at stake. So I think with the proper outreach, the proper communications, people can come to a better understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about these issues. And for a lot of people that have not lived it, haven't walked a mile in our shoes, it's hard for them to understand them on a personal level. And so I'll make it my goal to help them better understand this issue, and hopefully uh, out of that will come good policy. That's great. You can also be in charge of the resurgent bipartisan spirit in the legislature. Hi, I'm Deborah Danberg, and um, I would like to respectfully request that uh, Representative Torres kind of clarify a little bit about what your position is on this. Um, what I'm hearing is that you're kind of allowing the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Uh, it's kind of like back when we had slavery days, if, if we would have said, okay, here's a bill that would let the house slaves become full citizens, but not the outside agricultural slaves, wouldn't that be a step toward betterment, even though it would certainly not be justice and not be enough? And what I'm hearing you say is, because it doesn't include workers, and because it doesn't include certain other categories, the DREAM Act is inadequate, and therefore you're opposed to it. I'm wondering, would you be in favor of it if it did include everybody? And what are you doing to expand that so that everybody can get a path to that productivity? Well, first of all, I'm not in Congress, so what I really think, I'm sure they don't care about. But what I, what I will say is that I believe we, we need to find the right language that the, that the Congress can feel comfortable to live with and that the President can live with, whoever the President is at the time so that we can get this issue off and move on to other important issues that we have, much greater issues facing our nation. Maybe another way to, to uh, ask that kind of question is, given that the two of you seem to have some conflicting intuitions about this version uh, of an approach to the DREAM Act, if Romney were elected, would you like to see this policy lapse, um, or would you leave it in place, ideally, until some broader reform is achieved. For me, it's not my call. Uh, it's up to the president what he thinks is the right decision as president. And then I'll look forward to whatever it is that he's going to put forth. It's not my call either, but I'm going to have a